Hi, everybody, and welcome to Cliff Fun Comics. Uh, so I was inspired today by Toy Gains bringing up Mongol, typically a Superman villain from the DC Comics, and saying that he just doesn't seem to be very popular as compared to somebody like Apocalypse from the X-Men in Marvel Comics. Uh, and I feel like Mongol has been kind of like, you know, coming around. So I decided let's talk about Mongol. So that's Mongol. He is the ruler of Warworld, a planet-sized super arena where he puts on battles for, you know, millions of, you know, thirsty, hungry fans just trying to, like, clamor for the entertainment. Um, of course, he's appeared on Justice League Unlimited. That visual is terrible. He's appeared on Batman Brave and the Bold. He even showed up somewhere in the New 52 uh, for a reboot. Um, one of the most popular um, stories that we have from Mongol would be John Burns run on Superman, and the trade is called Superman Exile. And Superman exiled himself from Earth because he had gone to a pocket dimension that was created by the Time Trapper, who was a villain for the Legion of Superheroes. Uh, that pocket dimension, Time Trapper rescued it from Crisis on Infinite Earths, promising Superboy of that dimension, which would have been young Clark Kent, pre-crisis, that I'll protect you and your precious friends in the future and everyone you love. I'll put you in this pocket dimension and you do what I say. So you could use them as a weapon against the Legion of Superheroes. The Legion, now time traveling because the crisis has taken place. They go back to the past because Cosmic Boy just went on vacation in the past, but nothing was as they knew it. There was no Superboy. Superman didn't recognize Cosmic Boy. So um, four Legionnaires travel back um, because they're in danger. Uh, that would be Brainiac 5, uh, Invisible Kid, Sun Boy, and Block. Um, and, of course, this is a John Byrne story. So those four characters would be reminiscent of the Fantastic Four. With uh, Brainiac 5 being the genius, and instead of stretchy powers, he's got a force field belt that can project force field. Invisible Kid instead of Invisible Woman, who could turn himself invisible. Sun Boy in place of Human Torch, and Block in place of the thing. Um, of course, Superman doesn't recognize them. He does think, oh, I met a Superboy during the crisis. Superboy Prime. And he's like, I wonder if they're his villains or something. Um, but of course, they all get swept away and attacked by uh, pre-crisis Superboy, uh, who ends up giving his life at the end of that story. Um, but, oh my God, this is bad. That pocket dimension continues to live on. The Lex Luthor of that pocket dimension creates his own Supergirl um, out of protoplasm and some of like Lana Lang's DNA. Uh, sends that Supergirl from his dimension out uh, to get Superman because he unwittingly unlocked the Phantom Zone villains of his world. And they basically annihilated everyone on the planet. Uh, so Superman comes, and he's easily overpowered by these pocket dimension Kryptonians. And, of course, the idea that they are like, oh, you're from another dimension? There's another dimension we can go to that we can rule? Uh, and this would have been General Zod, Feora, and Jaxer. Uh, so Superman finds Superboy's uh, payload of various Kryptonites and unleashes all that Kryptonite on the three Kryptonians as they beg for their lives. Uh, and, of course, this would be this huge... John Byrne thing. I, I was actually called the Supergirl Saga, and it's a three-parter. Uh, the last part is Superman Executioner. Superman leaves devastated. He's got uh, Matrix, uh, her body, um, brings her back to the Kent farm of his world, uh, but he's just devastated that he's committed any kind of murder, that he couldn't find another way. So he self-exiles himself, goes into space, um, meets the Prophet, who is like found all this Kryptonian information and that would lead to the that would lead to the birth of the eradicator um because that's where that it was that device that was speaking to this prophet who was like oh Superman I can help you I know all this stuff um he gets stuck on war world a little bit depowered he has to perform for Mongol Superman angle number two from 1980 something depicts all of this and eventually Superman gets his stuff together and just kind of has to forgive himself and come back um, depending on who you are, that's kind of Superman killing has always been kind of a stain. And the fact that that happened and kind of went on for years, that that had been a thing, uh, goes on. And of course, as you know, current continuity, Zod's like, 
killing it on New Krypton out somewhere in space with dual suns. Um, but this was supposed to be about Mongol, and I went way off. But Mongol um, was created by Jim Starlin, uh, made his debut in DC Comics Presents. Um, Superman and Supergirl went after her, and then it was immediately followed by Superman Lost in Space. Um, and he couldn't retrieve Supergirl's body, and that's an Alan Moore story in DC Comics Presents where the Spectre is preventing Superman from, like, leaving the edge of space. And he's like, but Superman, I have the power to retrieve her. So, yeah, this is supposed to be about Mongol, and this has been a, <laughs> this has been a lesson on Superman. Um, but, uh, yeah, please go and check out Superman Exile, and also... I have a few other recommendations. I'm so sorry. Um, let's see. And I should have put up pics too. Um, so you all know for the man who has everything, it's like the most popular Mongol story. Uh, they made that Justice League unlimited episode based on it. And that's from Superman Annual number 11. The best of Alan Moore features Superman Annual number 11 in it. Um, Superman Exile by John Byrne is one worth looking for. Um, Mongol is actually one of the villains at the end of Reign of the Superman as Superman is returning. Um, Mongol is responsible for the assault on Coast City, which of course leads to Hal Jordan going crazy uh, and becoming Parallax. And also, we have so of course a modern pick would be Superman in Action Comics. So Superman in Action Comics Volume Two from. 2022 2023 it's called superman action comics the arena and that's where we get that modern superman the big bare chested but the big ass and the and the cape and he's depowered at the time uh you know battling mongol war world he's got some of the authority with him uh so and that's a really interesting story and of course that's where he rescues those two kryptonian kids who've been hostage there um so that's it for my first Cliff's Corner. I really hope this was a little bit helpful and informative. So peace out, you guys. And we'll be seeing you around at the council.